Hi guys, David Michael here. We finally got some rain here in southern Michigan. And because we got some rain, I figured I would show you guys a harvest of about two weeks. We're going to run through two weeks of harvests. Probably hunt five, maybe six times in the next two weeks because of all this rain. Here's a hydnum species that isn't edible because it, it just isn't paddable. But it has these spines underneath it instead of or gills pretty cool mushroom it has a relative that we eat called the sweet tooth you might get lucky and find some some people call them the hedgehog mushroom this is not the eater but hopefully I can show you an eater before our two weeks in July harvest video is done let's see if we can find some mushrooms What'd you find? I found a candy apple. Ooh, a pretty one. Let me get the buggies off of it. Look how beautiful that is. Wow. It's one of my favorite. I think they're one of the most beautiful mushrooms in the woods. Orange Mycena, which you can't eat. That's my absolute favorite to see in the woods. That's a nice find. Let's look around and see if we can find some more. Pretty. Perfect one. This odd shaped light brown colored mushroom is called a sweet tooth it's a hydnum species it does not have gills it has these spines nicknamed the hedgehog mushroom or the sweet tooth it's actually a quite delicious mushroom you brush these spines away. And cook the cap. Delicious find. Hedgehog mushroom. You would think cinnabar shants would be easy to spot because they're so bright orange, but they do like this deep, dark, shaded foliage more than they do anything else. There's some over here on the other side of this log, whether I can get down there and show you guys. see I'm going through multiple rows there's a couple there's a flush under there and then over by the sassafras tree Ow. get under this invasive autumn olive we have a very neat mushroom that tricked me. This is a waxy cap, I do believe, but I will verify that and give the Latin name in the description. That is a beautiful mushroom. It has gills, so it's not a chanterelle.
one chance. I always cut my mushrooms, especially chanterelles, and clean off all the dirt. When I cut a milk cap, I hold it upside down a little bit. I don't want any dirt in my basket, especially with chanterelles. I always turn them upside down a little bit and let the milk start to, and then I'll walk around the perimeter, leave them go for three or four minutes before I put them in the bag or the basket. That way I don't get that latex, the latex you can see on my fingers from picking them on this beautiful rainy day. The Indian pipe are nice, aren't they? Beautiful, there's some right there too. See it? Anyway, I always clean my mushrooms before I put them in the basket as far as the dirt on the stem. It kind of makes it easier when you get home. Snail bites all over that. Looks like a bicolor. See this stick is in my way? I'm gonna have somebody shortcut that one. <laughs> we got a bicolor? Ooh, snail bites snail all bites. over it. And there's a snail on it. Is there? <laughs> Found a guilty party. Yeah, he's busy eating it and I killed it. I don't see him. a lot of insects. So cut that in half for me, real quick. We'll give it to the snail if it's. See how fast or slow that stains blue. See this red streaks right here? Mm -hmm. The red streaks are telltale. The flesh isn't staining blue very quickly, but the pores are. The stipe will have red on it and yellow. Yellow pores underneath that stain blue, but the flesh doesn't stain blue, or if it does, very slowly. And the, these red streaks from the beetle grubs that go up into it are also telltale. This is a bicolor. That's an edible mushroom. They call it the two-color bolete or the bicolor bolete. When they're fresh, they're this beautiful red and then red stalk and then yellow pores, which makes it just a super strikingly beautiful mushroom. But that one we're gonna leave for the snails. Too yeah. many snail bites. And he's busy eating, wondering what we're doing. <laughs> Say hi. Let's go find <laughs> some more mushrooms. Yeah, you got latex all over you. <laughs> yeah, look. There's one that we stepped on. Aww. Just throw the cap in there. Just throw the cap in there. Wow. I got it everywhere. Those were full of latex. Here's one. I just zap them off. And... <laughs> <laughs> They're leaking all over. <clears throat> I'm loaded. Yeah, there are definitely copious amounts of fluid in those. You have to get to the lake and wash your hands. <laughs> Here's your knife back. You know you got it when your hands are sticky. Sand hill cranes. He's agreeing with me. <laughs> Oh, 
This is the blue staining bolete. This will, it's a gyroporous, this will stain blue very rapidly. Now this is an edible mushroom. It's a blue stainer that breaks the rules. See, it has a white pore surface, a bun colored top, usually a cream to white stalk. The whole mushroom bruises very easily. There's one more down here you can see. I'm gonna cut this cap, show you how fast it stains blue. These are strikingly beautiful mushrooms. I never find them more than one or two at a time. But there's one more right down here. Dawn's gonna show you what it looks like in the wild. And then I will cut that because we are harvesting mushrooms today. Pores, not gills. This is a gyroporus. I can't remember if this is castania or the other one, but I will put it in the description. Scientific name. Today's been a good hunt so far. Dawn has found candy apples, and I have found these and some psyllias. Uh, black staining polypore. Some people actually mistake for the Berkeley's polypore, which we have in this video. The Berkeley's polypore, the floret is huge. It's it's usually completely round, and these florets are much bigger than hen of the woods. Also, so black staining polypore is one that gets mistaken for both those mushrooms. And when you cut it, it takes a while, sometimes 10 to 15 minutes, but it'll slowly, slowly stain black. Now, I've only munched on this a couple of times. People have talked about making jerky out of this particular mushroom, the black staining polypore. I am very interested in making jerky out of the black staining polypore. So I don't harvest it very often. I just nibble on it here and there. The ends is all I ever take from it. And I find probably 20 to 40 a year black staining polypore. Pretty. Wow. Pretty. A couple snail bites. Pretty nonetheless. Let me put them in my basket. <laughs> put them in my basket. Put them in your basket. Got some pretty little flush of basulas here too, huh? Dawn found her first Berkeley polypore. She found a lot of black stainers and a lot of hens, but this is the first Berkeley polypore.
black trumpets in my mind black trumpets are the absolute most difficult mushroom to find they blend in with these oak leaves see that one hiding in there and most people walk right past black trumpets there's my finger and they never notice but once you get lucky enough to find black trumpets in these oak woods they should be there every year Cantharellus, Laterellus, Smooth Chanterelle, the Yellow Chanterelle. What it looks like in its environment. There are a few chanterelles here in Eastern North America and I will definitely include photos of those. There is a poisonous look-alike called the jack-o'-lantern. It's usually very orange and it has gills instead of ridges like the chanterelle. The stalks on the chanterelle are usually angular and they peel. The flesh is usually white. They're stringy. They peel, they're stringy. That's a telltale sign. They smell fruity. Once you get familiar with the yellow chanterelle, the smooth chanterelle, cinnabars, you really won't have a problem distinguishing the difference once they're in hand. And a lot of times you can spot them and know that they're chanterelles from a distance. Do some research and look up the jack-o'-lantern mushroom so that you can get a good understanding of what it looks like with its gills orange color and what it looks like bleached out this one's been in the Sun and these here are in a bit more shade so no gills ridges yellow white flesh base shaped once fully open button shaped and stringy flesh I put these in soups they're delicious Got us a flush of dotted stalk, soleus. Grows under white pine. It's in the Bolit family. Non-staining flesh, has glandular dots all over the stalk, white pores, it's got a bun colored top usually now the pores will darken up and become more cream as it ages the top is usually biscuit and sticky you just remove those pores and eat it's a nice little flush of them there's some bigger ones here it's what they look like when they begin to age I'm gonna harvest some of these one hiding right there now a lot of times you can find chicken fats or the American 
soleus in the same spot. There's one. I like these better than I do the chicken fats or soleus americanus. To me, they're better flavored. So I'll pick these and see what else I can find. Big old white pine out here in the middle of this old growth oak glade that I usually hunt bull eats in every year. And there are some species of soleus that are associated with white pine and a few other mushrooms. And as I was in here, I came across a flush of soleus americanus, nicknamed the chicken fat mushroom. It'll have yellow pores. They're all around me here in the poison ivy and the high grass underneath these white pines. They have yellow pores, yellow flesh, yellow cap. Sometimes you'll see tiny bits of red stringy coloration on top of the cap. Whether Dawn is able to let you see that but that's also indicative. Now they're not the tastiest mushroom, but after they're dehydrated and the pores are removed and then rehydrated, they're pretty good. Now I won't be harvesting these, these this particular day because I found a bunch of dotted stock soleus and several other species of boletes. And this one isn't in my favorite list. We have some big beautiful oaks in this little glade. <laughs> 